The NCAA tournament is officially set. Jeff Borzello is here to tell you who will win every single game. I'm Victoria Arlen. And Jeff, what is one factor you look for the most when choosing who will win it all? Pro players, NBA players, the teams that win, you know, that they don't always have the most talent in the country, but they have two or three guys that we're going to see play in the NBA. All right, we're going to start off in the West, Gonzaga versus Georgia State. Who is your pick? And just take it from here, Jeff. Like, we got. All right, let's start. So Gonzaga, no 16 over one upset this time. Gonzaga, I have advancing. I think they're going to play Memphis. The midseason turnaround that Memphis has had under Penny Hardaway has been tremendous. I think they're playing the way they were toward the end of last season when they were one of the you know 15 or 20 best teams in the country. Going down, I have UConn beating Mexico State. I have Arkansas beating Vermont. Going further down to the bottom half of the bracket, Whichever team comes out of the Rutgers Notre Dame game, I think Alabama will win that one. They've been one of the more inconsistent teams all season, but you could say the same thing about Rutgers and Notre Dame. So I think Alabama will have minimal trouble with those two teams. Texas Tech, I have advancing. And then my one seed upset in this region is Davidson over Michigan State. Uh, the one key factor, ironically, is going to be Foster Lawyer for Davidson, who started his career at Michigan State before transferring to Davidson. So I think he's going to get a little bit of, uh, of revenge on Tom Izzo and the Spartans in the first round. And then I have them playing. Duke, who are going to bounce back from their ACC tournament loss to, to beat Cal State Fullerton, at least. In the second round, we've got Gonzaga versus Memphis. Who wins there? I think it's going to be closer than people think, but I think Gonzaga is going to have the size and the athleticism to, to kind of deal with Memphis's pressure and depth and things like that. And I think they're going to end up playing UConn in the Sweet 16. I just like the way UConn's been playing, their physicality, their defense. I think it's going to frustrate Arkansas, and, and they start missing shots on the perimeter and uh, they can get bogged down offensively for for long stretches. So I think UConn advances there. And then I think Texas Tech, similarly, I mean, the way they're playing defense, teams just have a, a brutal time scoring on them. Alabama can get hot from three, so that's one thing to watch, but I think Texas Tech will advance. And then I think Davidson's run ends uh, against Duke. I have Duke advancing to the Sweet 16. All right, so let's go to the Sweet 16 and keep this train moving. So I have Gonzaga beating UConn. I think that's going to be a pretty tight game. Uh, I just think Gonzaga has enough size, enough shooting. Uh, the point guard play of Andrew Nemhard is going to be key, but I think they're going to beat UConn. And then Texas Tech, I have beating Duke. Uh, you know, teams just don't score in the paint on Texas Tech. That's what they do. They keep teams out of the lane, away from the rim. They force them to shoot jump shots. And Duke, that's been an issue for them. They're not all that consistent from three. They have guys that can make shots. I just don't think they have enough to beat Texas Tech. And then I have Gonzaga. I have Gonzaga going to the Final Four. Um, you know, the number one overall seed, I, you know, Texas Tech, I, I do think they're defensively good enough to get to the final four. And I just don't know if they have the scoring to keep up with Gonzaga. And remember, they did play earlier this season. Gonzaga beat them then. And I think they go 2-0 and against Texas Tech this season. All right, we're going to move to the East region, Baylor and Norfolk State. Who do you got, Jeff? I'm going with Baylor, the, the defending national champions. I don't see them uh, suffering a 16 over one loss. And then I have, they're going to play North Carolina. North Carolina's had their ups and downs all season. Uh, they were on the bubble for a time, but, uh, you know, they're playing pretty well. Um, it's going to come down to whether Caleb Love can make good shots, the point guard, um, take good shots and then make them. But I think they have enough to beat Marquette. And then I have them moving on to the second round, but then moving down in that top half of the bracket, I'm going St. Mary's um, to beat either Wyoming or Indiana. I think Indiana will probably beat Wyoming, but I think St. Mary's, um, you know, the, the nation saw them beat Gonzaga toward the end of the season. I think that momentum is going to carry over. Um, and, and advance them to the second round. I have UCLA uh, in an all-West Coast matchup, St. Mary's versus UCLA in the second round. The bottom half of the bracket, I'm starting with Virginia Tech. I think they're going to beat Texas. The, the, the momentum they had in the ACC tournament to go on the run, beat Duke in the ACC title game, I think they're going to carry over uh, and, and beat Texas, who has really struggled and not really lived up to the preseason expectations that Chris Beard had uh, when he landed all those transfers in the preseason. So I have Virginia Tech in an 11 over 6 upset. I think they're going to advance to play Purdue. Um, you know, Yale, I think, is a solid team. And we've seen Ivy League teams give teams trouble in the NCAA tournament before, but Purdue's just too big and, and too talented. And then at the bottom, Murray State and San Francisco, I think that the, both of those teams were good enough to win a game. They got pitted against each other. And um, I think Murray State's really good. And I think they probably could have been seated higher. Um, I think they're, they're one of the best mid-major teams in the bracket. I think they're going to beat San Francisco. They're going to advance to play Kentucky in a little Kentucky all Kentucky second round game. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the second round. What's standing out to you the most? I think the, the most interesting game is probably going to be Virginia tech Purdue, but we're going to start at the top. And I think it's, it's going to be Baylor. Um, I think they're going to beat Carolina. Um, you know, Carolina will probably keep it a game for 25 to 30 minutes, especially with Armando Baycott on the inside. 
but I just think Baylor has too much experience and too much guard play uh, to lose in the second round. And I think they're going to advance to play UCLA. Um, uh, another final four team from last season. I think they've kind of found their groove again after some hiccups in January and February. I think they're playing well right now in the bottom half of the bracket. I think Virginia tech's uh, magic run in the postseason comes to an end against Purdue. And I think Purdue's going to advance to play Kentucky uh, in what should be one of the best sweet 16 games of the, of the tournament. All right, let's talk about the elite eight. Who is going to move on to the final four, Jeff? I have UCLA versus Kentucky in the elite eight. I think UCLA is going to knock off Baylor in the sweet 16 uh, you know, UCLA, their, their whole offense is kind of predicated on making difficult shots. They have Johnny Juzang, Jaime Jaquez, but I think they have experience, they have size, they have depth. Baylor just just has some some struggles in terms of front court with all their injuries and, um, you know, down the stretch, they're just not playing as well as they were early in the season. So I think UCLA is kind of hitting their stride and they're going to advance to the Elite Eight. In the bottom half of the bracket, like I said, I think Purdue-Kentucky is going to be one of the best Sweet 16 games of the entire tournament. I think both teams are, are good enough to win a title. I just think the difference will be Purdue can't really defend anybody. Uh, they haven't really guarded consistently since the Big Ten play started. And, you know, Kentucky hasn't played that well down the stretch, but I just think they have the size, they have the shooting, they have the experience. Uh, and I think Purdue's inability to guard um, will kind of end their run in the Sweet 16. So I have UCLA versus Kentucky in the Elite Eight. Okay, Jeff, UCLA, Kentucky. What are we, what are we thinking? I'm leaning Kentucky. Um, I, I think that, uh, the perimeter matchup, I think, is going to be pretty similar. I think Kentucky has the size on the wing to to at least force Juzang and Hawkes into difficult shots. And I think the difference is going to be, you know, wouldn't award favored Oscar Shibway on the inside. Uh, UCLA did bring in a couple of big men from uh, to from to add to last season's roster. Miles Johnson is a really good defender, but he tends to get into foul trouble. And if he does, and Cody Riley also struggles uh, to guard Oscar Shibway, I think that he's going to be the difference. I, I see a, you know, 22.14 rebound type of night from him to lead Kentucky into the final four. All right, let's get to the South Arizona versus the play in winner. No upset here, right, Jeff? No upset. And, and uh, Arizona point guard, Kirk Frisha, uh, he's got an ankle injury, suffered it in the Pac-12 tournament, but I don't think he'll be uh, required to beat uh, whichever team wins the play-in game. So Arizona, I think we'll, we'll get into the second round with no sweat. And then TCU Seton Hall in the 8-9 game. I'm going with Seton Hall. Uh, you know, I, I think they're one of the better uh kind of middle of the bracket type of teams. I think that they're tough and they're physical. Um, and I think they're going to have enough to beat TCU moving down that bracket. A lot of people are going to pick UAB over Houston. I just don't see it. Um, you know, you give Kelvin Sampson three or four days to prepare for a team. Um, and I, I just think he's a heck of a coach and they, they're experienced. They defend, I mean, one of the best defensive teams in the country. And I just think they're going to make life difficult for, for Jelly Walker and UAB who, who did have a, a kind of a nice run through the conference USA tournament. I just think it comes to an end uh, against Houston. And then, my one upset in this region, or my first upset in this region, is Chattanooga uh, over Illinois. I think the 13 over the no. four there. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that Illinois, uh, Andre Curbelo has kind of been, I guess, the X factor for them. He hasn't really played that well for most of the season. People thought he was going to come back and be an All-American point guard. It hasn't happened. Um, and I think Chattanooga has the guard play to match up with them. And then on the inside, Kofi Coburn, he's dominant for Illinois, but Chattanooga has Kansas transfer, or former Kansas transfer, Silvio D'Souza, who gives them some legitimate size on the interior. So I have Chattanooga advancing uh, past four seed Illinois. Um, bottom half of the bracket, Michigan kind of snuck into the tournament. I think that they fall to Colorado State. Uh, Colorado State, I think, you know, David Roddy is one of the, the more unique matchups in college basketball. And I think that he's going to lead Colorado State to a win. Um, Tennessee, I have advancing past Longwood. Uh, Loyola Chicago, I think they're going to beat Ohio State uh, in the 10-7 game. Ohio State, they just haven't consistently competed against good teams since like early December. I think they have one or two wins over tournament teams since then. And I just don't think they're playing their best basketball right now. Um, and EJ Liddell, I think he's going to have a tough time against Loyola's defense. So I have a 10 over a seven there. And then I have Villanova advancing past my alma mater, Delaware, uh, in an all mid-Atlantic matchup. But I, I, uh, I have Villanova winning that one. Let's talk about the second round and who wins. So I have Arizona beating Seton Hall. I think it's going to be tight. And I think it's it's going to be a little bit more difficult than Arizona expects. I think Seton Hall is going to make it a half-court game, which is not conducive to what Arizona likes to do offensively. But I think Arizona is going to advance. And I have them playing Houston. I think Chattanooga's run as a 13 seed comes to an end. I think Houston's going to advance to the Sweet 16. In the bottom half of the bracket, I have Tennessee beating Colorado State. I think it's going to be a probably a low-scoring game. Um, but I do think Tennessee is going to advance as the three seed, and I have them playing Villanova. I think Villanova knocks off Loyola in the second round. 
Um, and then we move on to the, to the sweet 16. I have Arizona against Houston. I think that's when Arizona starts to need Kirk Kreisha, the point guard. If he is healthy by then, I think they're going to advance past Houston. Um, without him, it's just a different, a, kind of a different you know, offense for Arizona. They don't, they're not as three point reliant. He can really shoot it. He's, he's kind of their motivator. He brings that swagger. So I think they're going to need him against Houston. So if he's healthy, I have him advancing past Houston and I have them playing Tennessee. I think Tennessee is going to knock off Villanova in the sweet 16. I think Tennessee's playing uh, as well as anybody in the country. They kind of got under seated with a three seed. I think they hundred percent should have had a two. I think they had a better resume than Duke um, better resume than, than Villanova even. And I think they're going to prove it against Villanova in the sweet 16. And so I have Arizona versus Tennessee in the elite eight. Who moves on to the final four? So I wish these two teams were in different regions because I, <laughs> I went I, I went into the bracket thinking that I was going to have Arizona, Tennessee in my national title game. Um, I think that both teams are that good. But, uh, you know, this this is a rematch of, of a game earlier in the season that Arizona lost. This was their first loss of the season. And I think they get a little bit of revenge in this one. Um, again, they're going to have to be fully healthy. They're going to have to make shots. But I think they're going to have enough. Tennessee has been playing tremendously. I mean, they're one of the elite defenses in the country. And the way that they have used Kennedy Chandler and Zakai Ziegler as kind of a two-headed uh, point guard monster at both ends of the floor. Uh, I think that this puts so much pressure on opponents. I think that makes life really, really difficult. And again, I think they were good enough to win a title. I just think they're running into a better team in Arizona. And so I have Arizona advancing to the final four. Let's move on to the Midwest. It's Kansas taking on the play-in winner. Who's going to win there? Any shockers? Uh, no, no, I, I have, I have Kansas uh, advancing. This region is, is not loaded um, with, with overly explosive teams, but I don't think that's going to really matter in the one to 16. I have Kansas kind of coming out of that one pretty easily. Uh, the San Diego state Creighton game. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of the first to 50 wins. Uh, now their team is really good offensively. They're both elite defensively. So I think that's going to be low scoring. I think it's going to be a grind. You know, that might be like a 49 to 45 type of game, but I have Creighton advancing. I think they played really well in the big, big East tournament. I think they have some momentum moving down the bracket. Iowa coming off a big 10 tournament title uh, somehow only got a five seed, but I think they're going to advance pretty easily against Richmond who won the a 10 tournament. Uh, and then I have an upset in the four verse 13. I have oh. South Dakota state beating Providence. I think it's probably going to be a pretty popular one, given that people seem to not believe in Providence this year, despite winning the big East regular season title, they have a lot of close wins and they, and uh, you know, they're, I think they're more mentally tough than most teams in the bracket. I just think South Dakota state's playing really, really well. They haven't lost in, I think three months. Um, you know, they come into the tournament with the longest winning streak in the country. Uh, and I just think they're going to kind of be able to impose their style. Uh, they're going to be able to score. They're going to be able to push the ball. I have them beating Providence in a 13 over four upset. And then moving down to the bottom half, the LSU Iowa state game, that's not going to be one for, you know, a neutral casual fan to watch. I think it's going to be a, a low scoring LSU. Obviously, just had their head coach fired, Will Wade, um, right before the tournament, fired on Saturday, I believe. And, and so I think that's, that's kind of – it's a bizarre kind of storyline to watch. I mean, I think they can come out kind of backs against the wall and, 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 you know, win by 50. Or they could say, you know, we don't have a coach. We're going to lose, and they can lose by 20. So I think it's going to be really tough to predict. But I'm going to go with Iowa State. I just don't know where LSU is going to be at mentally going into that game. And so I think Iowa State, who I don't think is very good, but I think they're going to win this 11 over 6 just because I can't, I can't really predict what LSU is going to play like. Wisconsin Colgate, I think people are going to like Colgate. I will not. I'm going to pick Wisconsin. Um, you know, I, Colgate, I don't think they're as good as they were uh, last year when they, they, they kind of they were beating Arkansas at halftime of last year's first round game. I don't think they have a repeat. I don't think they're as good as last year's team. And then I have uh, Miami in a 10 over a 7. I have them beating USC in the 10 7 game, moving down to the bottom of the bracket. I just think Miami is really good guards, and guards, guard play wins in March. Um, and kind of it's the old saying. And, and uh, so I think they're going to advance to play Auburn, Auburn, not playing very well, especially away from home, but I don't think they're going to need uh, their, their full allotment of weapons to beat uh 15 seed Jacksonville state. We got Kansas, Creighton, Iowa, South Dakota state. Who do you got going here? So I have Kansas advancing to the sweet 16. I have them beating Creighton. Um, again, I think that's actually gonna be a pretty close game. I think Creighton um, has figured out how to play without Ryan Nemhard, who got injured a couple weeks ago. He's out for the season. I think they've, they might be better defensively without him. I don't think they can score as well without him. And I think that's going to kind of come back to hurt them against Kansas. And I think Kansas is going to play Iowa. I think, you know, South Dakota state, I, I kind of talk about how good they were, but I just don't think they have enough to beat Iowa who also comes in with a ton of momentum. Um, and then the bottom half of the bracket, I have Wisconsin beating Iowa state. Like I said, I don't think Iowa state's all that good. Uh, I think they had a great resume. I don't think they're, they're a very good team, especially over the last month or so. So I think Wisconsin advances there. 
And then I have Auburn ending uh, the 10 seed Miami's run. So I have Auburn advancing in the Sweet 16 to play Wisconsin. All right, let's get to the Sweet 16, shall we? What matchups stand out the most to you and who do you see going through? So this is my, my I guess, my big Sweet 16 upset of the tournament. Yeah, I, have I, with taking down, I have Iowa taking down Kansas. No. Um, yeah, I think okay. Iowa was good enough to make the Final Four. I, you know, over the last probably six weeks or so, Iowa has been one of the two or three best teams in the country. Keegan Murray has played himself into maybe being a top five pick uh, in the NBA draft. And I think he's really placed himself in the mix to win or at least compete with Oscar Shibwe for the national player of the year award. I think he's playing that well. He's the type of guy that, you know, you think of some of these guys going back to, you know, a Carmelo Anthony and guys like that who have carried their teams to the final four. I think he's that type of player who can carry them. And so I think they're going to beat Kansas and knock out the one seed in the sweet 16. And I have them advancing to play Auburn. Again, I said, you know, Auburn not playing that well lately. And I think their one issue is their guards. Um, Katie Johnson, Wendell, Wendell Green, really talented, play with a lot of confidence. You can't really take that from them. But the problem is they sometimes forget that Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler exist. And that's a problem because those two players, Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, are Auburn's best players. And so I think that that's going to be an issue against Iowa, but I do think they have enough to beat Wisconsin. Who's going to move on to the Final Four? Is there any more upsets here? Uh, I do. I have, I have Iowa knocking off Auburn. Um, like I said, I just I, I worry about Auburn's guard play. Um, you know, late in games, it's been a huge issue. They've they've gotten you know bad shots off. They haven't gotten shots off late in games, late in clocks because their guards just aren't consistent enough. Um, now on the other side, I mean, they can go for thirty a night and and you know carry the team and easily get to the final four. But I think Iowa has the size um, to deal with Jabari Smith, to deal with Walker Kessler. And again, I think Keegan Murray is the difference maker. Um, you know, I think he's the type of guy who's going to probably put up 25, 30 points every game in this NCAA tournament. I think he's going to carry Iowa to the Final Four. All right, Jeff. Now we're at the Final Four. We got Gonzaga, Kentucky, Arizona, Iowa. So starting with the Gonzaga-Kentucky game, I'm going with Kentucky. Um, I, I think once again, Gonzaga, despite being the overall one seed, despite having a tremendous regular season, winning the conference tournament, I think that they're – run comes up just short of a national title once again. Um, and, and I think the difference is going to be Kentucky's athleticism and length. Gonzaga's had some issues with this going back to the beginning of the year. Chet Holmgren especially has not really dealt with um, teams that kind of bump him and play, play against him with length and with size. He's had some issues with that. And I think Kentucky will be able to um, at least kind of get him off his game a little bit. And then I think Shibwe will be able, be able to match at least uh, Drew Timmy on the inside. And so I think it's going to come down to guard play. And I think Kentucky, Severe Wheeler is going to be able to put pressure on Andrew Nemhard. When you take Andrew Nemhard out of his game and don't let him dictate the tempo and dictate um, the pace of the game, Gonzaga struggles, especially to score in the half court. And I think Kentucky, their defense will be able to um, kind of impose their will a little bit on Gonzaga. And so I have Kentucky advancing to the title game. And then I think it's going to be an all wildcat matchup. I have uh, Arizona knocking off Iowa. Uh, and advancing to the title game. Uh, I just, I just think that Arizona is the most complete team in the country. Um, and, and I think they have, you know, they have enough size to deal with Keegan Murray. I think he's, he's a terrific player. I just think Arizona will be able to make shots. They'll be able to keep up offensively with Iowa. They'll be able to run with them. And, and then I think the difference is just going to be Arizona's defense. Um, I think they're going to be able to, to get enough stops late in the game to, to end Iowa's dream run to the final four. All right. So we got Kentucky, Arizona, Final score predictions. Who's going to win it all? Yeah, Wildcats versus Wildcats. And I'm going Arizona. Yeah, I'm going Arizona in this one. I think they're going to win. I'll go 70, 77 to 73. That's that's a, that's a precise score. A lot of research done behind that. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, um, you know, once again, I think that, you know, Shibwe, Oscar Shibwe, he's been dominant all year. But there are teams that have matched up against him with size, with depth. Alabama's one of them. They just kind of kept throwing big men at him. And I think Arizona can do that. Christian Coloco is one of the best defensive players in the country. Omar Balo comes off the bench. He's got size. And then Tubelis, um, Azulis Tubelis at the power forward spot. He's another guy who would run the floor, who could bang inside. So I think they have enough bodies to kind of deal with him on the glass. And then I just think that their, their perimeter players will be able to match shot for shot. And I think that Ben Matherin, he's been one of the best players in the country all year, the Arizona shooting guard. And I think he's going to be able to get his shot off against Kentucky's guards. I mean, Arizona is a big, big team and Kentucky plays, um, you know, a little bit smaller than they have in the past. And I just think the Arizona's size, their shot making um, and the pace that they play with, they're going to put so much pressure on Kentucky by, by getting up and down the floor. And, and so I think Arizona under first year head coach, Tommy Lloyd is going to cut down the nets. 